All right, guys, time for some biochem. Uh, so this chapter deals with proteins, carbohydrates, um, lipids, and nucleic acids, the four different kinds of biological molecules. And we'll talk about each one in pretty much detail. All right, before we start diving headfirst into those biological molecules, um, let's talk about polymers, because polymers are uh, uh, a, a pretty important concept that's going to apply um, to the majority of these molecules. A uh, polymer, as the name implies, is simply a chain of repeating subunits. Okay, so there's many, as poly implies, me poly means many, uh, repeating subunits. A mer is just one of those subunits, so one entity. Um, all right, so let's write it out, a chain of repeating subunits. A good analogy for that would be like pearls on a, on a necklace. One pearl would be one mer or one subunit, and then the whole necklace would be the polymer. Um, a monomer then, <coughs> excuse me, a monomer is just one of those then. It's just one single one where the polymer would be many of them linked together. So three out of the four biological molecules are indeed polymers. One of them is not. Um, I wonder if you know which one isn't. So if we think about that a little bit, let's, let's just go through them and evaluate each one uh, individually. We know that carbohydrates are basically made out of um, monosaccharides um, that then can be linked together to make polysaccharides. And the most common one is glucose. So if we have glucoses, they can link together to form molecules like starch, for example. So clearly carbohydrates, whoopsie, clearly carbohydrates must be polymers. If we think about amino acids, they, are, I'm sorry, if we think about proteins, we know that they're actually uh, chains of amino acids, so those are polymers also. If we have a whole bunch of amino acids linked together like this, that also forms a polymer. And then finally, DNA is, we, you know, we know the structure is a double helix, and we know that there's long, long strands of this DNA. So clearly that is most likely also a polymer, and indeed it is. It is uh, long chains of nucleic acids or nucleotides. All right, so lots and lots of nucleotides linked together um, to form the polymer of these nucleic acids or DNA and RNA. Um, so here we got carbohydrates, here we got proteins, and here we have nucleic acids. All right, so which one is missing? Which, which of the four did we not mention? And the answer is yes, indeed, it's lipids. So lipids do um, form somewhat large molecules, but they do not form true polymers. So if we think of the classic lipid, which is a triglyceride, it's got that glycerol, um, which is basically three carbons, and then these three extensions that can connect to something, and then three fatty acids, one stuck to each carbon. So here we have the glycerol. Here we have three fatty acids. Um, attached to that, and that's it though, that is the whole molecule. It these don't then connect to another triglyceride or another one yet to form some kind of a polymer. This, this is it. While this is a somewhat large molecule, and there are three of them, we don't consider three because it, it maxes out at three. We don't consider that enough to be a true polymer. When we're looking at these other polymers, we're talking about you know, 30, 40, 50, hundreds even possibly um, of individual monomers linked together to form these long chains. All right, the way that these guys link together is with a process that's called dehydration synthesis. So I'm going to give you a generic dehydration synthesis here where we take a look at uh, some kind of molecule, probably some kind of a carbon molecule in here. We, we don't care about the structure. could be whatever. And on it, there's a, an OH, in other words, a hydroxyl group. And then here's another one. could be the same or different molecule. 
and over here is a hydrogen sticking out from the carbon. So here would be a carbon, clearly, and then here's a carbon, but we don't need to worry about that. What, whatever this is doesn't really matter. Uh, to link those together, inevi inevitably this is going to involve an enzyme, although we don't worry about the enzymes now. What ends up happening is this OH and this hydrogen will combine together to form a water. Okay, so HOH is going to form, or H2O, obviously, is going to drop out. And that's what the dehydration is. The dehydration is the removal of water. Like dehydration in your body is losing water. So water is lost. And then the two individual pieces are now linked together with a covalent bond here. Okay, so if we have part A and part B, they're now linked together with the covalent bond through this process of dehydration synthesis. Synthesis means building up something, creating something. Okay. All right. Um, the other possibility of another example of dehydration synthesis is you could have something like this. You could have an OH over here. You could also have an OH over here with another kind of molecule. Let's, let's call it 1 and 2 to make it different. Um, one of these OHs is going to get removed, and a hydrogen is going to get removed to pull out water. And then what? So the water comes out, dehydration, and then the two individual um, original molecules, one and two, whatever those might be, doesn't really matter, are now connected by a, an oxygen like this. So this oxygen here remains, and it then links the two together. So this is something that happens with carbohydrates. It's the way that like glucoses will link together, and I'll show you that in more detail later. Um, but that's I just wanted to let you know that sometimes the entire so the water comes out and the carbons just link together like here. Sometimes that happens, and then sometimes there's an oxygen connecting. So hydrolysis then is the exact opposite. Opposite. So we could really pronounce this hydrolysis. Hydro as in water, and lysis as in breaking or splitting. All right, so water is going to get split, and the molecule is going to get split. So if we have a molecule like this that's already linked together, it's just going to be basically the reverse of what we did on top. A water comes in, okay, and this part here of the water is going to go there. It's going to get split up from the other one. It's going to get divided, and this part of the water is going to go here. So then eventually when we're all done, it's going to look like this. It's going to be two pieces. This will have the OH attached, and this one over here will just have the hydrogen, and they'll be separated. So the water came in and acted kind of like a knife, and it, and it split the two up. It cut them right there. But in the process, the knife, I guess, got destroyed because the water got destroyed. It turned into OH and H. It got split up also. All right, so that's hydrolysis, or hydrolysis in English we pronounce it, uh, means splitting apart a molecule. All right, so this breaks down larger molecules into smaller ones. This takes smaller molecules and build up, builds them up into larger ones.